Okay, here's how to solder. Strip the wires, dip the wires in flux, tin and prep both of the wires, apply heat and solder to connect the wires, add on the heat shrink, use a heat gun to shrink the heat shrink. If that all made sense, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. If they didn't make any sense at all, let's learn how to solder. Some common soldering tools include the soldering iron, solder wire or filler metal, flux, heat shrink tubing, and a sponge. Some extra tools that can help when soldering are a wire holder, a fan, wick, tweezers, a multimeter, and conformal coating. The job of the soldering iron is to heat up the filler metal and flow it onto the joint. My favorite soldering iron is the TS100 because not only is it compact, but it also has a digital temperature control so you can set the precise temperature. It also has an easy OLED display as well as a wide voltage range. This voltage range will allow you to use anywhere from a 3 or a 6S battery to power it so you can even power this soldering iron from the field. This soldering iron also has open source firmware so you can get updates whenever you need it. The interchangeable tips also makes it really easy to access large or small components, and there is a really quick heat up time with the TS100. The job of the solder wire is to form a bond between metal components, and it consists of a mixture of tin and lead. This proportion is expressed as a ratio. I like to use TBS solder 15 grams 63 by 37. This solder has a very low melting point, and it is one of the lowest melting points of all of the tin lead ratios. This characteristic ensures a rapid transition from a solid to a liquid state during soldering, simplifying the process. You don't want the solder to stay in a liquid state for super long because there's a higher chance of it flowing to components that you don't want. The 63 by 37 ratio also exhibits excellent fluidity and flow characteristics, providing a smooth and uniform solder joint. There are different cores when it comes to solder, and it is rosin versus acid. An acid core is not suitable for electronics because it contains a corrosive flux, and these corrosive substances can damage electronic components and circuit boards over time. On the other hand, a rosin core solder uses a non-corrosive rosin-based flux that is compatible with electronic components. A rosin flux leaves less residue after soldering compared to the acid flux, and these residues left by the acid core solder can be conductive and may lead to short circuits or other electrical issues. Next up, we have flux. The job of flux is to ensure successful and reliable solder joints. It does this by removing oxides from metal surfaces, particularly copper and brass. This can hinder proper bonding. It promotes wetting by reducing the solder's surface tension, enabling smooth and uniform adhesion. Additionally, flux helps prevent solder bridges, ensuring clean and visually appealing solder joints with proper wetting and oxide removal. And here you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of soldering with flux versus soldering without flux. On the left, the pad is just not grabbing the solder as well as the soldering on the right is with the application of flux. You'll also notice that the soldering on the right, the pad is cooling a lot quicker and is ready to add the wire, while the soldering on the left needs to wait a second to see that pad fully dry. On the right, you'll see that the pad quickly grabs the wire and cools even quicker, allowing you to move along and not have to wait as long, while on the left hand side, you'll see that the wire is just not sticking. You also notice a few extra spikes that pop up in the soldering, and that's because the wire does not cool quick enough. And here's one more example of soldering with and without flux with wires this time. On the left, the wires are barely even tinning because there's no flux to make the solder stick to the wires, while on the right side, we're already done. The wire's already stuck and it was really easy. And look at the left side, the wires just don't cool fast enough and aren't quick enough, and it's really difficult to get these wires together. Next up, heat shrink. Heat shrink tubing safeguards and reinforces soldered connections by offering insulation, crucial for preventing short circuits and ensuring electrical safety. It also provides strain relief, anchoring, and securing solder joints to prevent wire damage from pulling or tugging. Additionally, when properly applied, Heat shrink tubing can enhance water resistance, protecting soldered connections from moisture and environmental factors, which is particularly valuable in RC vehicles exposed to wet conditions. 
And as you can see, the application of heat shrink is super, super simple. Before soldering your connection together, just apply a little bit of the heat shrink over the potential joint and then apply a little heat via heat gun or even a lighter. And just like that, you'll have a waterproof connection that not only strengthens your wires, but protects them as well. Now this last tool is the easiest one of them all. It's a sponge to help you clean off your solder tip. Just make sure to not use this sponge on your dishes because it will scratch them. Now let's show some love to the extra tools. Starting off, we have wick, which is the exact opposite as flux. As you can see, it's kind of difficult to remove solder without the wick, but when you apply the wick, you just pull away all of that extra solder, and just like that, you'll have a completely fresh pad and nothing else to worry about. Next up, we have a multimeter, which can detect the continuity between your solder joints. So you can see in this example, we have continuity within our circuit, which is not good with the ground and power wire. So as we look at it, we can see that we actually have a bridge, which means the multimeter was able to detect an issue, so we know that we have to fix this solder joint before plugging in a battery. Next up, we have the handy helper, which has already helped us out a few times in this video, and it's really handy for holding really small wires, or even connecting wires, when soldering. Next we have conformal coating. Now this acts as a protective waterproof shield against exposed electrical components. And you apply it by just simply painting on this liquid onto any exposed electronics. And if you let it sit and wait, it will harden and create a protective coat. Now be warned, this is corrosive to foam. So you've gotta be very careful when applying it onto RC things. Here are five things to keep in mind when soldering. Clean your soldering tip always and often. There's nothing worse than having old solder on your new builds, so always make sure to clean off your soldering iron before you start anything new. Always use flux. Even if your solder has flux in it, always use flux. Don't use too much solder. As you can see, I use way too much and it balls up and it can actually damage your components, so only use what is needed. You can cut down on the risks of bridging if you only use the correct amount of solder at all times. Make sure to not apply direct heat on any pad for too long. As you can see here, even on this test pad, the pad starts popping and hissing as I leave the soldering iron on the pad. Instead, use quick bursts and only apply a little bit of heat to the direct area that's needed. And the last tip, a good connection is a smooth connection. I took a clip from earlier in the video where we're looking at using flux on a pad. And you can see on the left, you can actually see where the wire is connecting to the pad. This is not a good connection. Rather on the right side where we did use flux, the entire pad is completely smooth and you can't tell where the wire contacts the pad. By making sure the entire pad is completely smooth, we get rid of the chances of running into a cold solder joint. Just make sure whenever you're done soldering, all your connections are completely smooth and completely even throughout. Now that we know what you're talking about, let's go back to that original example. We're gonna start off by stripping the wires to expose metal so that we can actually apply the flux and start soldering. This is pretty easy, just grab a wire stripper or a little wire cutter and just gently pull out the outer casing. Next, we're gonna flux up the wires, which just means dunking them in flux. The next step called tinning the wires just means applying solder onto the wires where we just fluxed. This will allow the wires to connect to each other really well, or if you're soldering to a pad, it'll also let the wires connect really well. Next, apply a little bit of solder as well as heat to the above wire and push through until you can feel the wires meld together. This is really more of a feel than a no because you can feel when the wires will merge into one. Next, slip a little bit of heat shrink on and then using a heat gun or a lighter, just heat up the heat shrink and this will shrink down. It'll protect your wire really well. And that's it, now you know how to solder. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're still curious, feel free to check out any of our other how-to videos to get yourself started in the FPV hobby. Thanks for watching!